This module covers some common subsystem component malfunctions and the related diagnostic procedures that are used with Cummins electronically controlled diesel fuel injection systems. At the conclusion of this module, the student should be able to list the common subsystem component malfunctions and describe the various troubleshooting techniques required to locate and repair these problems. The lift pump check valve is tested when the low pressure flow and lift pump pressure are tested. If the check valve is stuck open, the lift pump output will be lower than specified. The check valve that is stuck closed or opening only partially will cause the restriction measurement to exceed specification. The fuel metering actuator for the front bank is first removed and the adapter kit installed in its place. The adapter torque plate cap screws are then tightened to specification. The water manometer is then connected and the zero on the tape is aligned with the water level in the manometer. The engine is then barred while observing the manometer reading. Depending on the beginning crankshaft position, it may take as many as two revolutions to check all three injectors in a given bank. If a change in manometer pressure is noticed, the barring of the engine must be stopped and position noted for the valve set marks on the damper. Once the faulty injector is noted, the engine barring is continued through the remainder of the two revolutions to test the other injectors on that bank. A typical fuel system test is to check the transfer pump output pressure while cranking the engine. To check the transfer pump cranking pressure, a pressure gauge is installed at the location stated in the service literature. The pressure is monitored while the engine is cranking and the reading is compared to specification. If pump pressure is lower than specification, it should be verified that the engine cranking speed is at or above the specified minimum. On some systems, it is also important to ensure that the lift pump output is correct. To check the transfer pump pressure at rated RPM, appropriate fittings and adapters are used. Some engines require the installation of a precisely orifice diagnostic fuel line to ensure a minimum amount of fuel flow during the test in addition to the pressure gauge. The output from this diagnostic fuel line, when used, is routed to the fuel tanks. The engine is run at high idle and the fuel pressure reading on the gauge is measured. Problems with the fuel tank include clogged vents, kinked or twisted fuel lines, and cracked or restricted pickup pipes. These items are checked visually and when testing indicates there is a problem with the system. Fuel tanks must be vented for the fuel system to operate properly. When a fuel inlet or drain line restriction is greater than specified, the fuel tank cap is removed and the test repeated. If removing the cap causes the readings to fall within the specified range, the fuel tank vent system should be inspected for restrictions as well as plugging. If air is found in the fuel, tighten the hose connections from the fuel tank. Check the drop tube in the fuel tank for damage as a crack above the level of the fuel will allow air to enter into the fuel flow. Check any O-rings for damage. Each tank needs to be checked when checking for fuel in the tanks. Any manually operated valves in the crossover pipes must be fully open and any electrical selector valves need to be functioning. If two injectors in the same bank fail the cylinder performance test, the overhead adjustment settings on both cylinders must first be checked. If the overhead adjustment is correct on both cylinders, the injector that failed the cylinder performance which fires first on that bank should be replaced. The injector is installed in the adapter for the injector nozzle tester. 
the fuel connection on the injector must be aligned with the opening for the fuel connection. The fuel connection in the adapter is then installed. The fuel line is tightened while the fuel connector and injector are held in position and then torqued to specification. To check an injector for opening or pop pressure, the valve is opened on the tester and the lever is slowly operated to build pressure in the injector. The pressure gauge needs to be observed. When the needle valve moves off of its seat and injection begins, the reading on the pressure gauge will drop. The maximum gauge reading is the injector opening pressure. This pressure reading is compared to the specification. The chatter test verifies the ability of the needle to move freely and properly atomize the fuel. The valve is closed and the handle on the tester is operated. When the injector reaches its opening pressure, the valve opening should be audible. The sound is the needle opening and closing. The spray pattern is observed while checking for chatter. It may be necessary to increase the pumping speed to obtain a good spray pattern. All of the holes in the nozzle should be open and producing a uniform pattern of atomized fuel. To perform a leakage test, the valve on the tester is opened. The lever is operated to hold the pressure at a specified level below the opening pressure. No drops of fuel should fall from the tip of the injector within a specified time. If the injector does not pass all of these tests, it must be repaired or replaced. The troubleshooting and repair manual can be referenced for complete repair procedures. To test the injector, the leak test isolation tool is used to isolate the injector. Because the actuator for these systems is a normally open valve, any circuit problem, such as an inadvertently disconnected actuator connector, will cause the actuator to open. This results in maximum flow to the high pressure pump, leading to the opening of the fuel rail pressure relief valve. This valve protects the rail, lines, and injectors from any malfunction causing overpressurization. On ISC ISL CM850 equipped engines, when the fuel in the rail exceeds the valve setting, the valve opens and fuel is returned to drain. The fuel rail pressure relief valve is a two-stage valve. When closed, only a small area is exposed to the fuel in the rail. This makes the valve a fast-acting valve that opens at approximately 26,100 psi in this example. Once opened, the outer plunger moves to its stop and a larger area is exposed to the high-pressure fuel. This causes the inner plunger to open and rail pressure drops to 14,500 psi. After the fuel rail pressure relief valve opens, the rail pressure must approach zero to reseat close the valve. To measure the leakage rate of the fuel rail pressure relief valve, a banjo bolt flow adapter is installed at the front fitting on the drain manifold. While the engine runs at idle, the InSight high-pressure leak test is used to create the required fuel rail pressure. 
the maximum allowable leakage for the time specified is given in the service literature. If the fuel drain manifold is not readily accessible, this test can be performed by installing the test fitting and hose onto the valve. 